If you live any further from the sun than Venus, you'll likely need a coat for your Rhodesian Ridgeback. But with more options than ever, which one should you get? Let's start with the easy answer. If you have a Ridgeback puppy in the winter, I recommend getting the silliest and cheapest looking thing you can find that reasonably fits. Going to a big box pet store can help with sizing. But don't spend too much time or money on it, because it's only going to last for a few months at most. But what a hilarious few months they are. Before we jump in, and while you enjoy these ridiculous clips, I just want to let you know this video isn't sponsored by anyone, because my integrity isn't for sale for anything less than like, I don't know, 17 bucks, which none of the coat companies ponied up. I selected the models to review based on both personal experience and from soliciting input from others. While there are no guarantees, I strongly feel the best coat for your Ridgeback is likely one of the five we'll take a look at today. February left us no shortage of days to test our gear. So let's take a look at the top contenders who also happen to represent most of the top teams at the Winter Olympics. So that's a good sign. Out of Canada, we have the Great White North Coat from Chili Dogs. This is the jacket I know best and have used for a decade. This jacket here just finished its sixth winter of work, but the Polar Fleece still looks great, both outside and in. The Velcro is a little worse for wear, but we've never had an issue with functionality. The coat is secured by two adjustable clips that meet at the waist. I had to model Zero here because he'll be in all the other jackets you see, but Mayhem demonstrates how it's supposed to look. I love this jacket because it follows the keep it simple stupid rule. It's easy to put on, and the two point adjustment buckles on the back really help you dial in the perfect fit. It's versatile and durable across a range of conditions and settings without compromising movement. The two places where this jacket struggles are when it's exceptionally cold, as in well below freezing, and when there's any significant precipitation. With wet snow or rain, the shell is great, but the fleece retains water and freezes. For us, that's not an issue for the vast majority of days, and I've been really happy with the purchase. We've put ours through the ringer, with use up to five to six days a week during the winter, and it's undoubtedly been one of the best investments I've made. But there's another popular fleece jacket in town. Representing America, we have the Winter Coat from Voyager's K9 Apparel. Made in a similar style as Chili Dogs, this jacket feels noticeably more substantial out of the box. The additional length of Polar Tech fleece definitely adds some heft. The turtleneck design includes a collar cutout, but it's not a feature I use. One, I worry about stretching it, and two, I find it ends up too low on the neck to work with where I like Zero's collar. The jacket is secured with a sturdy and wide Velcro strap on one side and a counterbalanced one on the other. I found it quite secure, but a bit more difficult to dial in the exact fit I wanted. The hood feature provides additional warmth, and fortunately the large size landed perfectly in terms of length. I am concerned with the chest area. It might just be zero size, but when I pull the panel down, it feels like it restricts his movement. But then when he runs, it pushes the panel back up and exposes more of his body to the cold. That said, Zero doesn't seem to mind it in the least. He looks good, plays well, and can frolic gleefully with the best of them. Which is great, but he also needs to be able to brawl with the worst of them, aka Penny Mayhem. Our jackets need to be able to withstand the elements, but just as important, they have to weather Ridgeback attacks. So far, the Voyager has performed admirably. But one of my favorite features, the turtleneck, becomes a big liability during rough play. The extra fabric may provide extra warmth, but it also provides extra places to get thrown around by. With both the Chili Dogs and the Voyagers, I've had people say their fleece has lasted 10 plus years without a rip, and others say theirs ripped in a week. I think it's just inevitable with the material, and likely a bit of dumb luck as to when it happens. That said, overall, I wouldn't be too worried about durability. 
slightly in here goes before the jacket does. Next up, all the way from Finland, we have the sexiest jacket I've ever seen in my life, the Tapa from Pampa. I wasn't originally planning on reviewing it, but I couldn't not buy a jacket with this much 80s sex appeal. And it reminded me of the thrift shop snowsuit I bought in college. The Tapa has a nice waterproof exterior that also happens to repel good taste. It has a thick shearling like interior that's thick and sure to provide plenty of warmth. The Tapa design is pretty straightforward, so you need to be doubly sure about measurements. That said, it's simple to strap on, and as if it needed more swag, it has a nice rollback collar. Functionally, it worked way better than anticipated, but it does work better at slower speeds than the ones my guys are usually playing at. I can see this being a great coat for longer and slower winter hikes or for an older Ridgeback, but it felt too bulky and flappy for our normal day-to-day -day use. That said, you can bet I'll be taking plenty of fashion photo shoots of Zero in this bad boy for years to come. I mean, even he knows he looks good in this one. Lastly, the fins came on strong with a second brand. Herda, that I see a ton of European Ridgebacks wearing. This is the Extreme Warmer, and it was immediately clear on opening that this is an entirely different breed of jacket. It's a technical coat with a ton of great features to ensure maximum warmth. The adjustable neck and back provide fitted insulation, and the belt buckle is the most heavy duty of all the jackets we've tried. The rear cord offers the unique ability to adjust the length of the coat as well. The inside of the jacket looks like it comes from the year 3000, but the reflective material provides excellent insulation across all major muscle groups. The Herda also features these leg attachments that I'm not crazy about, but more on that in a minute. Putting on the Extreme Warmer requires more time and adjustments than any of the others, but the result is a pretty remarkable fit for heat retention. One of the biggest knocks on the warmer is the high risk adjustments you make on the back end. This button here is designed to snap underneath the tail, which okay, but if things don't line up perfectly while your dog's pooping, you now own a very expensive poop bag. To Herta's credit, they've incorporated this feedback into newer models of the jacket, which allow you to avoid the problem. Mother Nature was kind enough to provide us with plenty of extreme weather to test the warmer and I was really impressed by the performance. Though there was a learning curve of figuring out how to best situate the back half of the coat. Still, it's pretty incredible at providing warmth without hindering movement. I love that it offers the front coverage like the Voyager, but still allows for fully articulated motion. I love that the entire exterior of the jacket is weatherproof and sheds water. Though, you do need to be more careful of the interior. Best of all, this thing sheds mayhem nicely too. With no thick fleece to gain purchase on, Penny doesn't drag Zero around by the jacket. There's always a risk she tears it anyway, but no getting around that. And about that back end, here's me terrified about it. Zero, 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 we tried the warmer out on two of the coldest days here in Chicago, and I quickly felt bad that only Zero had this jacket. I've never felt the need for multiple jackets for my dogs, but this experience really made me reconsider. I was so impressed that I decided to check out another Herda offering, the Expedition. In part because I wasn't sure of the differences between the two jackets. The Expedition is less a technical jacket and more akin to a heavy winter parka. It retains many of the features I like about the Extreme Warmer while opting for a simpler form. It slips on and adjusts easily, and when sized properly, lands just right. As mentioned earlier, I'm not a fan of these non-adjustables leg straps. I just don't think they add enough in order to be worth the trouble and the risk of getting caught. If the rest of the jacket is properly fitted, 
I think you can do without them. The Expedition is a noticeably bulkier jacket, but it moves really well for its size. It's also fairly form-fitting, so it doesn't leave much for Mayhem to grab onto. In fact, I found the thickness works like a nice coat of armor for Zero, and he needs all the help he can get. The Expedition is too heavy a jacket for either end of the season here, but in the heart of winter, it's an absolute tank that really exceeded my expectations. So after all that blabbering and testing, where do I stand? If I were to design a dream coat, I'd start with Chili Dogs as the base. I'd add in the additional coverage of the Voyagers, the articulated fit and adjustable neck of the Extreme Warmer, with a fully weatherproof shell of the Expedition. All in the top of colors, of course. And hey, a cute hood as long as we're dreaming. But short of that, if you can only buy one coat, I feel like the Chili Dogs and Voyager coats are likely to best serve the most number of people. Your favorite jacket is likely your most versatile one, and the same is true here. These two coats aren't perfect, but they cover the widest range of temperatures and conditions. That said, I am really glad that I now have warmer options too. Context and climate are key. If I was starting from scratch, I'd get Zero a new Chili Dogs coat, and Penny of Voyagers. She could use the extra warmth, and the shape probably wouldn't be as restrictive on her, while Zero would get the form-fitting jacket, which is less tempting for Mayhem to drag him around by. I hope you'll take my recommendations as starting points rather than the final word. My real hope is that by seeing the jackets side by side, you'll feel more confident in your decision, whatever that may be. I also can't say enough about sizing properly. Don't guess or hope or use another dog for reference. Measure exactly as described on each site and follow their recommendations closely. Otherwise, you might end up in a situation like this, with Penny and Zero looking like Baby Yoda and the Mandalorian. You can get by, but it's worth getting right. And as to why I'm releasing this video at the end of winter, well, because there's no better time for a sale. I think each of these jackets is well worth the retail cost, but in the next couple months, you may be able to find them at discount or on clearance. And since none of the companies ponied up the dozens of dollars I'm worth, this video is sponsored by me. If you found it helpful, check out the link to my store below. And of course, if you have any questions about any of these jackets, just let me know in the comments below.